In this video I'll be showing you a simple way of creating low poly and fairly realistic trees, which you can use in your games and animations. This tutorial is aimed at beginners with a good understanding of the interface. This technique is actually taken from my new Blender Environment Artist course, which has just been released and has an early access discount. You can pick it up for only $12. The discount ends on Monday. The course is aimed at complete beginners to intermediates and will develop your skills to make this wonderful scene here. As always it's a very methodical approach so the skill level builds up as you go and there are lots of challenges in there for you to learn from. I've tried also to show lots of different techniques such as quick simple techniques for more basic animations or games and complex techniques for high detailed AAA style graphics. So whatever your required outcome, you'll have the skills to create and develop the content accordingly. The coupon's in the description. And also as a bonus for the people who haven't skipped this advert section, there's a mega Grantius Maximus bundle, which gives you a mega bundle discount off all my courses. So you might want to have a look and check that out as well. Again, all coupons are only valid for this weekend and end on Monday. So let's start making some beautiful trees. So I'm in Blender 3.1 and my shortcut keys will be displayed down the bottom corner here and we can start with the default cube and to make our tree trunk we'll go to the sculpting workspace but don't worry you don't need to be an artist or have a graphics tablet I'll do everything with a mouse and it's nice and straightforward I'll bring out my brushes so you can see what I'm using the main brushes will be the snake hook brush the grab brush and the inflate brush a bit later on we're going to use Dyn Topo so that will create topology for us don't worry about the warning message just press OK and open up the dialog box and it's much easier for beginners to change this to constant detail rather than relative detail. And the resolution we can change to something like 10. That does depend on the size of your object, but if you haven't scaled your cube or anything like that, then 10 should make sense. Now we're ready to sculpt, so I'll use my snake hook brush. I'll zoom out a touch, and to resize the brush, you press F and move your mouse side to side. So I'll make it nice and big, and I can start pulling out a tree like this. Do make sure you move around your object to see where this is going and it can be a little bit tricky to control to start off with because the snake hook brush kind of rotates the mesh as well like this but that can be fairly fun. So I've got a basic trunk there I'll just line it up a little bit and if you find the snake hook tools a little bit awkward then go across to the grab brush once you've extended your trunk out and you can start pulling it about and it won't deform so heavily like the snake hook tool. Also I like to have references of bonsai trees and their styles I find that's really helpful for getting a good shape of a tree. Now it needs to be a bit thinner at the top. The easiest way to do that is use the smooth brush. So hold down shift and smooth and you can see it getting thinner. Now you might go a bit too far like I have here. That's where the inflate brush comes in and you can inflate it back out. So smooth brush by holding down shift and inflate brush to inflate it back out if you need to. So I'll go back to my snake hook and I'll create a few extra branches as well. So I'll make my brush a little bit smaller and just pull out a little bit for an extra branch coming this way and maybe nearer the top, an extra branch coming this way. Do be careful because sometimes when you pull this brush outwards you get a broken mesh like this and you want to avoid that. So I'll undo that stroke and to avoid that just pull it out slowly by tapping away like this and if you need to you can inflate the end if you want that trunk to be a bit bigger and then back to the snake hook tool and pull it out a little bit further. Anyway I'll undo those changes because I don't need it to go that far and I'll use the grab brush to bring it back in a little bit like this. Okay so it's a weird shape at the moment but we can modify it easily with the grab brush and make it look more tree like and smooth out if you need to. The thing about the grab brush you must remember is don't try and pull and extend your mesh with the grab brush because the grab brush doesn't actually add topology to your mesh so it's not affected by the dying topo. You need to go back to the snake hook tool if you want to extend the mesh and put it out further and you can see that's creating new geometry whilst it goes. The grab brush is purely there just to sort out the shape. Remember to move around your mesh and see it from lots of different angles so you don't get a really flat looking tree. And that looks good. Now let's work on the base. I make my brush nice and big, use my smooth brush and smooth it out. And then use my snake hook tool once again for the roots. I pull them down slightly so that they'll sink into the ground when I bring a ground in and it will overlap. So I've got some basic roots there. You might want to change the size of your brush as well or zoom in to create some smaller roots coming out. And as always, go to the grab brush to tidy things up. That one's probably a bit too small, so I'll just inflate it slightly. And back to the grab brush to level them out slightly. Maybe bring the trunk in if it's a bit thick. And just keep moving around your mesh to make sure that the shape's working. I can thin the ends out by using the smooth again. It's a little bit flat from this side, so you might want to make sure that you've got a little bit more variation in the trunk 
from every angle. And that's as far as you need to go with the base. The rest of the detail is added with textures. However, if you want to add a bit more detail, you can use the Draw Sharp brush. And to be fair, this is a little bit easier with a graphics tablet, but you can draw some sort of bark lines within your tree like this. Remember the strength over here, or you can press Shift F to change the strength, and you might want to turn the strength down, especially if you're not using a graphics tablet. The advantage with a graphics tablet is that it uses pen pressure, so you can vary the pressure nice and easily. Whereas with a mouse, you have to press Shift F. You can also hold down Control if you want some sharp edges that point outwards, because holding down Control is doing the reverse of the brush. You can't add too much fine detail with this, because it will be lost with the decimate modifier later on. But you can just add some variation in the shape to give it a little bit more effect. So there we have a fairly nice looking trunk and that's all done using the mouse. Now it's time to make some branches. For the branches, we'll be using an alpha texture. There's some really nice ones on textures.com. If you search for branch, you can find some nice branch photos like this and they have a transparency channel. So when we bring it into Blender, it will only show the picture and not the background. You do have to sign up to textures.com, but you get 15 free credits a day, and you can use those textures in your games and things like that, but you can't sell the textures on. So do just check the license agreement yourself to see what you can and can't do. I'm using branch number 0038 for my texture. So back in Blender, I'll go across to the shading workspace, so you can see what happens when I bring in the texture. Now for this, you can hook it up yourself, or you can use a special add-on. It comes with Blender, so you don't have to download anything. Just go to Edit, Preferences, Add-ons, and type in Image in the search bar. And the add-on we're enabling is called Import Images as Plane. So make sure that's ticked, and then you can close this down. I'll move my 3D cursor so it's away from the tree with Shift right click, Shift A to add, and under the image now we have Images as Planes because of that add-on. If I tick that, navigate to my branch texture. You can always enable the thumbnails up here if you need to find it. And here's my branch texture. Click on the texture, import images planes, and it will come in like this if I zoom in on that. I'll show you what that's done in the shader editor. It's put the color into the color, of course, and the alpha channel there, it's put into the alpha of our principal BSDF, which gives us this transparent background. I'll go back into layout view because it's a bit easier to edit, and I'll change to material preview mode so I can see what my texture looks like. So to edit this, I'm going to rotate in the Z 90 degrees and rotate in the X 90 degrees to light flat down like this, and zoom in on the object. I'll scale it up just a touch, so it's going to work with our tree a bit more. We're going to turn this into a branch, so I want a branch object that I attach this to, and then I'll attach those branches to the tree. So Shift A to add, mesh, and then cylinder. Now we want to keep this nice and low poly, so we might as well have the cylinder at something like six vertices. And once it's shaded smooth, you won't notice that it's low poly. I'll shape this by extruding it and just scaling it down each time, and that looks like an okay branch. Also, I'll add a bit of variation to the branch texture by going into edit mode and adding a few loop cuts. I'll use the proportional edit, the shortcut key is zero, and I can grab one vertex, move it around, and change the shape and add a bit of variation. So now we've edited the shape, it's got a little bit more volume to it. I can now add some of these to my new branch and scale them down as they get towards the end. Then start varying the rotation and just make sure everything lines up with the branch. Okay, we've got our branch almost ready, but I need to texture the thick part of the branch and the tree. So before that, let's sort the poly count of the tree at the moment, if I show you the statistics. It's fairly high at 40,000. We can come across to the modifiers, add modifier and decimate. The great thing about this modifier is it tries to keep the shape as best it can, and I bring down the ratio, and you can see it bringing down the poly count there. We've got 1,500 faces, which is much lower, are much more acceptable. What you must avoid, if I go down to 0.001 or something, is this sort of thing. So it completely destroys the shape. So there's only so far we can go, but if you want to go really low poly, you can go like this, and it still creates quite an interesting shape for our tree, which will actually work in a stylized way. This is at 0.01 for me, and you can see a few problems in these sort of areas, but again, it will work when it's covered in those branches, and it's only 400 faces. I'm going to go to 1,000 faces, so 0.025. So it's kind of the best of both worlds. We've kept our shape, and we've still got a fairly low poly count. Let's go across to the shading workspace and think about the bark textures. Now for the bark texture, you can just type in bark PBR and come up with lots of bark textures that you can try out on your tree. Just check the licensing. Lots of these have licenses that you can use them in your games, 
but you can't sell them on, but do check the licenses for yourself. The one I'm using is from CG Bookcase, and it looks like this, and you can download it here, and it's got all the different maps that you need to make up your PBR material. If you want to know more about PBR materials, then do check out my Node School videos. If you go back into Blender, there's a nice easy way to add that PBR texture to our material, and that's with the Node Wrangler. If we go up to Edit, Preferences, type in Node, you can see the Node Wrangler add on there, make sure that's ticked, and then close this down. Now when I click on the principal BSDF and hold down Control, Shift and T, I can navigate to that folder, select them all, and press Principled Texture Setup. I'll zoom in on my tree a bit, and you can see it's not working yet. There's a couple of reasons for that, but you can see that my texture is nicely set up and it's got the color, roughness, normal, and displacement here. You don't really need to worry about the displacement when you've got a low poly object, but I'll leave it on for now. What we'll need to change is that it's using a UV map and we haven't got a UV map for our object yet. So I'll change that to object. And you can see it's working a bit better, but it's projecting it from the top. So it's stretching downwards along our tree. We can change that. At the moment it's flat projection. We change each of these to box and it will project them from each side of our mesh. And you can see we've got quite a nice realistic texture there. I'll right click and shade smooth and that'll be even better. You may see a slight line in the texture. You can probably just about see it there. You can turn the blend up for each of these and it will blend the texture projection together. And you can see that working there. You don't really have to go all the way to one and maybe a little bit less would be more beneficial in this case. And that's looking reasonably good. The other thing you might want to do is change the scale. We can click and drag across all of these and change the scale, maybe something like three if you want it a bit finer or reduce it to something like 0.2 if you want it really chunky like this, which in this case seems to work quite well. We want a similar material on our branch here. So I'll select that bark material there and actually I'll change the name to bark tree, but you may want a different scale for this. If you want to do that, you'll need to create a new texture based on the old one here. And this one will be bark branch. Then I can adjust the scale to something like 0.05 and it kind of matches the tree a bit better then. So I'll go back to layout mode. The last thing for me to do is then to join these together and then put them on our tree. To do that, I'll select all these objects. Make sure you've got one active object, often better being the branch in this case. And to change that active object, you hold down shift and left click and press control J to join them together. Also, it's a good idea to set your origin point to the base of the trunk like this, because then when you're rotating and scaling, it always works from your origin point. Now I can start joining them to my tree. I always find this is better in top view. Move this over, Alt D to do an instant duplicate and rotate it round. And you can actually press Alt D R maybe 30. I'll do minus in this case, so it goes the other way and just press Shift R. So it creates loads of them around your trunk. Then we can go to something like front view, move all those up to somewhere around here and then just start moving them up randomly like this. The branches at the bottom are always a bit bigger and they gradually get smaller as they go up and you just start placing them on your tree. Now, yes, you could do this with a particle system, but I really like having the control of manually doing this. Particle systems are a bit too random to get a nice looking tree, in my opinion. You might also want to create a mega branch. So duplicate a branch, maybe scale it down a touch and attach it to your original branch and maybe rotate it a little bit. And you've got a kind of bigger branch there. As you get to the top, you might want to start rotating them upwards slightly. So they kind of fan out a bit at the top. And remember the shift R command and you can create lots quite quickly in a similar sort of place. Do remember to use some reference images. Again, I use the bonsai tree styles and I think that's really helpful. So here's the finished tree in a little scene. And obviously I've duplicated it twice to create another couple. They look different, but they're just the same tree that's rotated round and they're placed on this fun rock with a particle system of some grass on top. Now to change the leaf color, I'll go across to shading, click on one of my branches. Now when you join them together, they'll have two material slots one for the bark and one for the leaves, which is this branches 0039 texture I downloaded. I've added a couple of nodes to give it a red color. So I'll show you how to do that. So here's the original green and I can press shift A to add color and a hue and saturation node, chuck that in between and I can change the hue to something like 0.3, up the saturation a bit to make it more ready, maybe bring down the value a touch, which is the brightness to something like 0.7. And there we've got some nice ready orangey colored leaves. I added another RGB curves node to this, but it's not really necessary. Okay, so hopefully that will help you make some fairly low poly, fairly realistic trees. Let me know how you get on in the comments. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.